Sign up with BetMGM Sports using code CHAMPION200 and win $200 in free bets when you place a $10 money line wager on any Major League Baseball game and either team hits a home run. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Virginia only. New customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-888-532-3500. Hi guys, Dr. Wendy Dearborn here from You and the Laws of Attraction. Well guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to this this podcast called You and the Laws, that's Laws Plural, of Attraction. So guys, for those of you who are new, welcome. For those of you who are returning, hey, what's up? Guys, this podcast, this show is all about me. It's all about you. It's all about us understanding how powerful, how powerful our choice, choices are. This is whether we make our choices consciously or whether we make our choices unconsciously, which I am sad to say most people walk around in making unconscious choices in their life. That's why you can kind of wake up and say, how did I get here? You know, I'm always saying that. You know, it, uh, it's like, how how did I get here? This is something that many people say, I don't understand what happened. I don't understand the sequence of events that brought me to this. I thought everything was all right. Your life is built upon the choices that you make. Okay, guys, bottom line. Your life is built upon the choices that you make. So today, now, this minute, in this moment, in this present moment, I'm going to say to you, make the conscious choice, make the conscious choice to take your life back. And what I mean by that, take your life back, take your life back by taking control, conscious control of the choices that you make. As I said a moment ago, we spend our lives making or living, being dragged along by unconscious choices that we make and these unconscious choices let me just say this these unconscious choices that we make they really are in the best interest of self because yourself your inner self your higher self your god self whatever whatever phrase you fill in the blank feels right for you but that inner self that has that soul knowing is literally going to take you on a pathway so that you can fulfill your destined purpose. You came here to do something. And that thing that you have come here to do is like a magnet pulling you. So my thing to you is this, guys. Why not make conscious choices? Why not take your life back? Why not take complete ownership? And I really mean this, take complete ownership of your life. You see, when you have ownership of your life, ownership is synonymous with responsibility and accountability. You can't really cut those two up or three up, especially when you come from the angle of ownership. When you take responsibility for something, you can, you know, really debate about the ownership. You can debate about whether or not you're accountable. But when you take complete ownership of you and your life, you take responsibility and you sure as hell are accountable. So that being said, guys, um, what do I do? What do I do? I am a choice and clarity expert. I assist people with finding out what they want, finding out the choices that they want for their lives. I assist people in finding clarity around that choice and also clarity around what is going on in their life. And the biggie, 
what they are wanting for their life. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. And that's what I do. It's something I'm passionate about. It's something that I know is needed because everybody here on the face of this planet is making choices, consciously or unconsciously. And I'm of the opinion that because your life is choice-based, that's how you live, that you should be able to make choices in the best interest of self, consciously, consciously. I mean, guys, really, isn't it, it, it's kind of rough, you know, when you kind of say to yourself, how the hell did I get here? How, how, How did this happen? With all the knowledge I have or all the smarts that I have or every every resource that I have, how, how did I get here? Well, you got there because you're not making conscious choices. And I will say this, guys, not every choice you make is going to leave you with the warm and fuzzies. For those of you who used to listen to um, my Life, My Choice podcast, you'd hear me say that frequently. They're not always going to make you, give you the warm and fuzzies. So if that's what you're looking for, you're going to be dragged along subconsciously. Choice making is about your authentic self. And your authentic self is about you living a purpose-filled and purposeful life. You're here for a reason, not just because. And it's an important reason. It's an integral part to how the universe works. That's how important it is. You know, many people see themselves as this this little cog in this wheel or this this small nut screwdriver or screwdriver, well, hey, small screwdriver, small nut, small screw, what have you. They see them as this minuscule thing. But it's that little bolt that was loose or fell off that made the plane drop out of the sky. It's that little washer that allowed the ship to take on water and sink. Every body... Bet MGM is pitching baseball fans a chance to swing for the fences. Register using code CHAMPION200 and win $200 in free bets when you place a $10 money line wager on any Major League Baseball game and either team hits a home run, regardless of your bet's outcome. Enjoy baseball like never before with Bet MGM's daily promotions at your fingertips all season long. Download the app or go to BetMGM.com and use code CHAMPION200 to win $200 when you bet $10 on an MLB game and either team hits a home run. Sign up today and find out why nothing beats a win at the King of Sportsbooks. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Virginia only. New customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification and eligibility requirements. Rewards issued as non-withdrawable free bets or site credit. Free bets expire seven days from issuance. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-888-532-3500. Has an important role to play in the universe as we know it to be. Well, that being said, guys, that's my soliloquy. But that being said, welcome to the show. Once again, my name's Dr. Wendy Dearborn and I'm gonna be with you for the next perhaps 30 minutes, 40 minutes, and or I'm freestyling these days, however long it's gonna be, but no longer than an hour. I'll say that, no longer than 60 minutes. So what's today's show all about? What is today's show all about? Well, today's show is all about authority. Who is the authority in your life? And I've got a couple of questions for you. Who has the authority over your life? Who has authority over you? Well, guys, the word authority really comes from the word author and the 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 um i'm looking at dictionary.com and one of one of the actual um 
definitions is the maker of anything, creator or originator, um, create or design for, somebody who actually writes something, they're the author of it. And so guys, my question to you is this, who is the authority on your life? Who has control over your life? Who has the power to determine what goes on in your life? Who has command of your life? Who has the right to, to delegate in your life? Who has that? You see, guys, it's, it's really funny. I, I had told this story. This was many, many years ago. And I told, told this story about, um, I was, oh gosh, guys, this, this is, this is ages ago. And I say ages, this has to be about 40 years ago. Actually, maybe a little longer. Woo! I'm getting up there. And it has to be about 40 years ago. I was collecting some research and this was for myself because I, I wanted to make up. I was always into makeup, you know, and that was one of the things that I had, one of the many things that I've been to school for, but I was always into makeup and I couldn't understand why at the age of sort of like 19, you know, 18, 19, what have you, I couldn't understand why I couldn't find colors that complemented my skin tone. I, 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 I couldn't figure it out. I mean, even back then you go into, um, any of the, the major departmental stores, you know, and that included Woolworths it, and where I'm from, it would have been, uh, Little Woods, the co-op, um, let's see, uh, we've got Debenhams, uh, John Lewis's, uh, uh, and, and the list goes on, right? You go into these stores and you'd have the, the, the makeup, the makeup counters. And I'm here to tell you what has changed is they just have more stuff, more, more companies. But outside of that, even the setups are pretty much the same. Not, not too much has changed guys. Not too much has changed. And I suppose they're of the opinion, you know, if it, if it's not broken, don't, don't try to fix it. But anyway, um, I'll go in there and I couldn't find anything. I, I, I couldn't find anything that suited my skin tone. And I, I was absolutely shocked. So what I did was, and this is where I'm going to go. I'm going to talk about authority, but I, I just want to, you know, elaborate with this story. What I did was I got a white coat from my workplace because I actually worked at um, Hammersmith and West London Hospital at that stage. It was a maternity hospital. And so I kind of borrowed a white coat and I got a clipboard and I wrote out a list of questions. And I was at the train station. I was at Shepherd's Bush train station, Medina de Bush. I was at Shepherd Bush train station. I did Hammersmith. Um, I did, uh, one of them in like Wilsdon, Neasden. I did one of those and a couple of others. I think I went to Brixton. So I went to these, these different areas and there were areas that I knew had a, a high population of West Indian and or people, women of color. And so what I did was I had my clipboard and I stood there and I, I sort of said, excuse me, can I ask you a few questions? Um, and this is just about makeup and cosmetics in general. And I had this whole list and I was actually surprised by how many people actually answered me. And I realized they answered me because I was, I had on a white coat and a clipboard. In addition to that, based on the fact, God bless Mrs. Calvert. For those of you who've listened to my previous show, um, uh, My Life, My Choice, you'll hear me talk about Phyllis Calvert. God bless her. She taught me how to present myself with authority. And when you present yourself with authority, 
people have a tendency to listen and so I've got I've got all these this this document this information and this was ground level information and I took it I compiled a graph and that was with the help of my dad because maths really wasn't my strong suit so I compiled a graph and I actually wrote to the major cosmetic houses and I'm talking about major cosmetic houses and I was appalled I mean literally appalled by the response that I received and basically the response said and I don't know if that's true today I couldn't tell you but basically the response that I got got back from from them was you're not our our, um, market you're not our target market so we're not interested I was like wow but anyway where I was going with this is authority when you present yourself in such a way that you are an authority on what it is that that you know or what it is that you are doing people based on the fact of how we are trained if you will how we are raised how we are perhaps indoctrinated might also be a really good word here people respond and they respond and and, and they really do respond now I do recognize that many people or many groups of people or, or we as a people wherever we are right whoever you are wherever we are in the world we as a people recognize leadership we recognize leadership and not everybody can be a leader it's not everybody's forte not everybody can be a leader because people just don't like that kind of responsibility they don't want to have to make those decisions and that is something that I think is really important man must know their limitations when you know your limitations you actually know your strengths and this makes you a formidable person because you know who you are so many people they they look to and look for leadership that doesn't mean to say that because you're looking for leadership that you can be led by the nose that's not what I'm talking about but they're looking for leadership and in that leadership they're looking for somebody really who's organized somebody who will take the reins and move forward in a way that is mm, in a way that is satisfying or satisfactory to the people who are following and this 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 is what they do but anyway authority I did this whole thing with the, with the clipboard and I was amazed because I know if I had been out there with um, my jeans and um, a crop top and my hair afroed or whatever it was at the time, curl, whatever it was at the time, etc, etc, people would not have responded the way in which they did. That being said, where I want, what I want to ask you is this. Who is the authority in your life? Who are you allowing to influence, and I mean truly influence your choice making process? I see things, and it's very rare that I speak about government and what's going on because at the end of the day, it's fleeting, it's got here today, gone tomorrow, okay? However, I see things going on in governments and I wonder what what people are are thinking. You know, I wonder what the masses are thinking. I see people being told that, you know, there's this going down, that you know, there's this pandem- pandemic that's on on the horizon or that um this person has done this and this person has done that. How the hell do I know that's true? And you see, guys, this is what I want you to ask yourself. Just because somebody has said it, does it mean that it is so? The answer to that is no. You know, we we hear about all these medicines that they've made and it, it, it does this and does that. And then two twos or in a year or two, you see, if you or a loved one, this always is, if you or a loved one has died, what? What kind of English is that? 
But if you or a loved one has died because of taking X, Y, Z, call Dearborn, Dearborn and Dearborn. We want to hear from you. There's a class action lawsuit. But people started taking this stuff because they were told by someone in authority who has influence over their life that it's safe to take it. Or what they say now, which to me is a real kicker, what they say now is that, well, the the actual side effects outweigh the need that you have. So it's better to take this and then deal with the side effects. Now, because this is the type of show that it is, and I'd have to beat myself out for about a minute if I really told you what I felt about that. So without beeping myself out, I'm going to say to you guys that that is wrong on so many levels. Once again, who is the authority on your life? Some of the things, some of the things that they say, and I really mean this, some of the things that they say, they are so absurd. They're so absurd. But yet still you will have people who, well, they said it on the news. And I don't care what channel you're listening to, whether it be ITV, BBC, one, two, three or four. If you're listening to uh, Fox or N. N BC or MSNBC or whatever, whatever's out there, you know, um, channel three, whatever's out there. Just because somebody said it doesn't mean it is so. And that includes me. Whatever you hear on any of my podcasts, whether it be podcasts from the past, this podcast or anything that I do in the future, What I'm here to tell you is do your own due diligence. Do not be led around by the nose. Because what happens is people start falling off of a cliff. Look, I'm going to break it down this way. You need to be the authority on your life, point blank. And what that means is you're going to need to start taking some ownership. What that means is that whenever somebody in authority tells you something and then is telling you to act on it like like some sort of sheep, you need to ask the question, is this really so? Is this going to affect me? And if so, how? That's what you need to ask yourself. And I'm not talking about asking them. I'm talking about asking you. People are not stupid. Although when you get the the race mind or the mass mind, that is something that is definitely programmed, programmed into people that they cannot have um, an authentic individual thought. You see, when you are open and susceptible to uh, information that is out there. And as certain political figures say, this is fake. And you know something? There's a lot of fake stuff running around out there. There's a lot of fake stuff running around out there. And so if if you don't have... Mm, how do I phrase this? I'm, I'm looking for the right way to phrase this, guys. If you don't take the time to think your own thoughts, and I really mean to think your own thoughts as they originate from you and they are not fed to you, what happens is this builds energy. And this is why you can get um, you can get people who will, on a one-on-one, they would never do 
something that they do when they become a part of a mob, when they become a part of a gang, when they become a part of you fill in the blank. They were on a one on one. They would never do some of the heinous things that they do. You get the you get that whole mob mentality. And they can really hurt people. They can really hurt people. And that's because of energy. That energy builds. It is it's like a snowball rolling down a hill, building. It builds. And that energy can only build if you don't have something in place. Something in place that will diffuse it and say, this isn't me. Many people um, have been accused of, many people have been accused of little things, maybe like not even being patriotic and all this jazz. Because their intrinsic belief is whatever's going on is wrong and I don't want to be a part of it. And for that, they're they're decried. For that, some people have been in prison. You know, guys, once again, who has the authority over your life? Who is, hmm, who is facilitating your mental thought process. So you are making the choices that you are making. Who has the authority over your life? Who is influencing your belief? You know, your belief is your belief. But if you don't stand firm on that, And I really mean if you don't stand firm on that, your belief can be skewed by somebody else's belief. And I'm going to tell you this, somebody else's belief is about them and their agenda. So who has authority over your life and whoever it is, what is their agenda? And I'm not saying that all agendas are bad, but all agendas are self-serving. And that's the bottom line. I don't care whether you're doing charitable work. I don't care what you're doing. All right. I don't care whether you're a floating ship of doctors going, you know, to Timbuktu or what have you. All of that is to the highest. But the agenda is self-serving. And is there anything wrong with that? No. No. And in my mind, as long as you're not hurting people, as long as you're not preventing people from... Uh, achieving and aspiring as long as you are not holding people down and creating this sort of like um, sheep mentality you know I what okay guys one one of the things one of the things that I like to say to you is this if you've never ever ever watched the movie wag the dog with Robert De Niro. You need to watch the movie. There's also another movie called Capricorn One. Okay. If you've never watched Capricorn One and that that movie, oh gosh, that movie has got to be about 40 years old, Capricorn One. Wag the dog, maybe, I don't know, maybe about 20, 25 years old or something like that. Guys, watch these movies. Now you could say is art imitating life or is life imitating art? Truthfully, I don't care because there's kernels of truth in art. There's kernels of truth in in what you've seen. And it's staggering. It's mind blowing. You know, how is it that today there's this huge problem? You know, a huge problem that has turned into a global problem. And then tomorrow they say, it's okay. But no, how, what? Oh no, they say, they say it's okay. And that's, that's the refrain, that's the echo 
that everybody starts saying. And, you know, guys, with this, and, you know, you know, the whole conspiracy theory thing, hey, all, all, all to the highest. All to the highest. However, with that, there's extremes. And with that, you need then to know who is the authority on your life. Who is the authority that you are allow, allowing to, to influence you? My mother would say, and I know guys, you've heard this saying, or I'm going to make that sweeping statement. There is no smoke without fire. And truly, if there's smoke, there's some kind of flame, there's some kind of ember, something's burning. Guys, it's time to take your life back. It's time for you to declare that you are the authority on your life. If you like where your life is going, as the authority on your life, good for you. And the question then to ask is, how does it get better than this? Or what does it look like for it to get better than this? If you do not like, the way that your life is going, it's time for you to become the authority on your life. It's time for you to become the person who delegates, the person who determines, the person who, who, who commands, the person who adjudicates, the person who within themselves set, uh, settles issues and or disputes. The person who has the right to delegate what it is that they want to delegate. The person who has the legal power to enforce upon self what it is that self wants to do. The person who has the ability to create what it is that they want. The person who has the ability to be the maker of things that happen or the things that manifest in their lives. You are the originator of your life. Your life starts with you. Your life ends with you. Everything in the middle belongs to you. And when you come out on the other end, it is still all about you. I've spoken many times about people and the, the, the blame game. People in the blame game. Guys, stop blaming people for your life. Stop blaming people for your life. I read, oh my God, I wonder if I can pull this up. Yesterday... My niece had posted something. I don't know if I'll be able to pull it up. But yesterday, my niece, Clara. Let's see. Clara. Um, yeah, here we go. Yesterday, my niece had posted something. And that's Clara. And it was about a... Um, it was written in the Elephant Journal. This is elephantjournal.com. And it was an article that was written by a psychologist, I believe. Her name was um, Parchment. Uh, Parchment. And it was it, the the article said, "Telling people to forgive is gaslighting in disguise." So you know, I I flicked on the article, and guys, believe me, when I see this stuff, I do actually read. I I I actually read a lot of this stuff, and it was saying that forgiveness. Forgiveness, there are detrimental and toxic aspects to forgiveness. And I I was reading and I read things like the victim becomes in charge of letting go of con the consequences of another person's cruel and selfish action. You know something, I should do a whole show on this, right? The, the, the victim becomes in charge of letting go of the consequences of another person's cruel and selfish actions and I kept reading and I was absolutely I was I look 
I don't even know which word to tell you what happened to me when I read that. But I was absolutely stunned. I was stunned into speechlessness. And I'm like, this is a psychologist? Well, one of the things I said, well, she isn't somebody who I would see and I would never recommend anybody. How can you make a claim? How can you make a claim like that? That, that, you know, <laughs> look, I uh, see guys, I, I, I can't even get, I can't even get it out. The victim becomes in charge of letting go of the consequences of another person's cruel and selfish actions. The consequence of not letting go of that is what? The consequence of not letting that go is what? That is me drinking poison and sitting there waiting for you to die. How does that help you or anybody else? You see, when people start talking about forgiveness, what they don't understand is forgiveness isn't about anybody else. It's about you cutting yourself free. It's about you letting go of something that still has you in a traumatic state. The person who has done something to you, they've gone on their merry little way. They've gone on their merry little way. They ain't even thinking about you. But yet still, your life is being um, controlled by somebody who has authority over you. Forgiveness isn't about condoning somebody's behavior. It's not about sweeping it under the carpet. It's not about pretending it didn't happen. It's not about you, it's not about you um, saying, you know, that it's all right when it's not. Forgiveness is about you letting go of the fact that this thing can hold you in bondage and it can prevent you from moving forward. It can prevent you from moving forward. You know, um, this this article went on <laughs> went on to talk about, you know, people who have illness illnesses. Well, here I stand or sit before you, as someone who had a life shortening illness and had a near death experience. Let me tell you this. That illness was mine. It wasn't in anybody else's. I had it. I had the near-death experience. It wasn't anybody else. I was the one who couldn't walk, talk, see, and all this other stuff that went on. So whose illness is it? Whose illness is it? It's mine. Ownership. Ownership of your life starts with you and guys yes I recognize I recognize that many people out there have been abused many people have been abused through childhood through their teenage years into their adult life or throughout their entire adult life yet still even with that even with that you can allow the abuser still continue to hold you in bondage you know there, there was um in a, a chapter of uh, a, a book or or whatever i was working on i wrote about uh, this woman we'll, we'll call her um sharon actually i think that's what i called her in the the work as well we'll, we'll call her sharon and sharon had issue with with her mother serious issue with her mum serious I mean like serious and she was talking about her mum uh, I was in the beauty shop and I, I think my stylist at the time her name was Barbara <clears throat> and I was in the beauty shop and uh, Sharon was talking about her mum in really not glowing terms really really not glowing terms and 
I actually open my mouth to say something and my stylist at the time, she really shook her head like, no, don't, don't engage. But Wendy being Wendy, you know, I simply ask the question, why have you talked to your mum about this? And it's really funny because my stylist really looked like she wanted to stab me in my, in my jugular with, with her scissors because I just opened the floodgates and she started talking. And then I come to find out that her mum was already deceased. Her mum had already been deceased. I mean, one of the things that she said to me, and I remember this clearly was, you know, if I was feeding my baby with a bottle, holding my baby, feeding my baby with a bottle, vacuuming the floor, cooking dinner and doing the laundry at the same time, my mother would have criticised me and told me how useless I was, basically. And I looked at her and I was like, well, are you useless? Well, no, that's, that's, that's the point. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. But, 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 but. As, as a consequence of this, this relationship that she had with her mum, which was clearly toxic, um, her and her son's relationship was, was at loggerheads too. And as a result of that, she wasn't able to see her grandkids because she, I'm, going to make the sweeping statement was very critical of her daughter-in-law and her son put his foot down that's how you break a cycle you put your foot down he put his foot down so as I listened to her as I listened to her I quietly asked some probing questions and she got really pissed with me because the questions were really designed For her to start seeing, she needs to start taking ownership of her life, especially as her mum is no longer with us. You know, her mum had been, look, her mum had been, her mum had died several years. And she was really mad with me. So we spoke and I went into, at that time, spiritual counselling mode, etc. And I knew she was mad. Because I gave the plate that she was holding back to her. You've allowed an authority who is no longer with us to still control your life. Was she abusive? Yeah, very much so. Very much so. Physically, yeah. Mentally, yes. Emotionally, God, yes. Throughout your life. Your actual marriage disintegrated several years ago because you could not let go of this. And letting go, guys, I'm not saying it's easy. But when you make a choice to take take control of your life, when you make a choice to forgive, I'm not saying, and I'm not talking about forgive and and forget not being the thing or whatever they say. I'm talking about forgive and be at peace with. You can change your life. And I'm going to come back to Sharon in just a minute. Forgiveness is all about you. It's all about you taking your life back. And as contrived and upside down and contrary that's the word I actually wanted as contrary as this may sound as harsh perhaps some people will take this as this may sound you must first forgive yourself for allowing self to take and I'm not saying because as a kid Sometimes, God knows, as a kid, sometimes you got, you got to take it, right? But to forgive yourself for how you have allowed yourself to let that situation impact your life negatively. And I'm talking about your life negatively. I'm not talking about forgiving the, um, the circumstance. I'm not talking about forgiving um, the behaviour I'm not talking about condoning the behavior. 
But I'm talking about forgiving yourself because for most people, in my professional opinion, the trauma from abuse or whatever it is that's, that's been going on, the trauma from that is most people's um, impudence to be um, effective. And when I say effective, most people's ability to be able to shield themselves, most people's ability or inability, sorry, inability at that time to stand up for self. And that's what they see. That's, that, that, that's the thing that holds them in that cycle. The inability to, you fill in the blank. The inability to say no, the inability to run away, the inability to clap them back, slap them back, the inability to do whatever, whatever it is that you now know or you now think you should have done. Well, you need to forgive that because there were many things that were going on and you need to forgive that and know that if that presents itself in your life now, you have the ability to do, fill in the blank. All right. So for many people, this is, this is, this is really hard because it sounds like you're being blamed. It has nothing to do with blame. It has absolutely nothing to do with casting aspersions and blaming. It is so far removed from that. It has nothing, because something in her article, she was talking about shaming people. It has nothing to do with that. Forgiveness is freedom. And I speak this from personal experience. Only in my life. Guys, look, I've said this before on many podcasts. When I had my near-death experience, I was shown a mural, a wall, if you will, of, you know, like all the things that I had done and all the things that I had done in my life up until a point, up until this point. And all the things that had happened to me, I blamed everybody. From my ex to my friends to my parents to the people to the government to the school to the teachers to the road sweeper to the person who broke the bottle to the this to the I blamed everybody and anybody instead of taking ownership for my life and one of the questions you will always hear me say is what did you do because that's the question that I was asked. Okay, we hear the situation. We we hear the scenario. Actually, you could see it, believe it or not. It was, it was amazing. Y- you could see everything unfold. And then it's like, yes, we see. That one said this. This one said that. That one did this. This one dad did that. But what did you do? Well, because they... No, 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 no. What did you do? choose to do and that's the long and the short of it you are the authority on your life because at the end of the day your life begins with you the middle bit is you the end is you and you will review you you will analyze which is why we're always analyzing stuff analyzing ourselves because intrinsically we know that this is something that we'll do we will analyze self we'll analyze self we really will be the authority on your life take ownership of your life moving forward from this point today don't let anybody just because okay guys um, a friend of mine, um, their parent, one of their parents has just been diagnosed with uh, cancer. The cancer they believe has been caused by them having taken medication 
for the best part of their life. And this medication they believe has contributed greatly to the cancer. Now they, they're looking for another medication. And this morning, believe it or not, I looked at the medication and I read. I read all the pros and God knows I read all the, the, the contraindications. And one of them, well, several of them said that, you know, it's carcinogenic. It has the potential to be carcinogenic. However, if you're going to, if you are undergoing treatment for, for cancer, you cannot take this because it actually um, suppresses the immune system. But this is what they want to give. You have to be an authority on your life. Because I, I brought that, that was the first thing. I looked, I read, I'm like, well, hey, look. Do you see where there's a conflict here? Do you see where there's a conflict here? Take control of your life. Take your life back. Become the authority on your life. You do this by literally knowing what it is that you want. You literally do this by, uh, look, I have people who say, why can't they just fix me? What? No, baby, that's not how that rolls. You cannot give your life over to anybody like that. The only person who can fix you is you. And believe it or not, you're not broken. You're just a little scuffed up. The only person who can fix you is you. And once again, you're not broken. So guys, I I just wanted to say that to you. Be the authority on your life. The other thing is with Sharon. I saw her um, maybe about a year later. And I was in Albertsons. And I saw her in Albertsons. And I thought to myself, oh God, I wonder if she's going to speak to me or or if she even remembers me. So I did my usual. I was like, hiya. I was like, oh, hi, how are you? And she said, do you know something? I'm doing really well. And she said, I was really, really angry with you when I met you at the hairdresser. And I said, yeah, I'm aware of that. She said, but I want to thank you because I actually thought about what you said. Even in anger. See, anger can be a mo- a, a motivating um, and inspirational factor in people's lives. All right. So she said she thought about what I said and she said she truly started working on it. She'd been seeing a, She'd been. St- this is what I mean. She'd been seeing a bloody psychologist for God knows how long. God knows how long. And she was stuck in a loop. But anyway, so she said she thought about what I said and she started working on it. She started working on herself. She started doing help self, help, self-help self stuff. She started talking to herself. And actually what she was doing was she was taking her life back. I think the biggest trigger was for her when I sort of said to her, but your mum's dead and she's still controlling you. You know, how does that work? How, how does that make you feel? you know, helpless, helpless. But anyway, so I said to her, so how's it going? So she said, well, herself and her son, they have um, reestablished good contact. Um, She now can have the grandkids because that was one of the issues. She couldn't get to see her grandkids. So now, you know, grandkids are on school vacation. She gets to have the grandkids and Um, when I saw her, if I remember rightly, it was right before Thanksgiving and she said that she was going to their house for Thanksgiving. And what I wanted to say to her is make sure you behave yourself and don't criticize your your, your daughter-in-law. But I didn't, I just said, that's nice, (laughs) right? Which it was. So one of the conversations, although I didn't bring this up, one of the things that she had had a great issue with, of course, is with her ex. So I said, well, how, how does, how's that going with your ex? And she kind of laughed and she said, nah, I have to work on that in the next lifetime. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, yeah, it's not working for me in this lifetime. But she's working on it. And that's the major thing. She is now the authority on her life. She is. She has taken her life back. 
So guys, I hope that this podcast will assist and support you. I hope that there's some kernel that you take out of this, that you are able to um, able to uh, support you in creating the life that you want to live. Because this is what life is all about, you and the living of it. Forgiveness is huge. If you haven't um, done so, I did a 21-day forgiveness project. This was uh, last year. It's absolutely huge. And I, look, guys, I cannot even begin to tell you the freedom that comes with it. That I don't have to carry around this ball and chain of hatred or toxicity or anger and this and that. And guys, let me tell you this. When you have actually forgiven somebody, you you know. Because when you hear their name and that, it doesn't bring up this... You know, this... this, this it, it, it doesn't bring that up. You know, or it doesn't take you down back down memory lane. I should have said this because they said that. And I, it doesn't do that. They're a passing thought in your mind. And if so desired, you can shower them with blessings, sweetheart. And I don't mean bless you. I mean shower them with blessings in the hope that they too are experiencing the miracle of freedom that you are experiencing. Guys, you are an authority on your life. Take control of your life. Be the person in the white coat. Be the person who determines what goes on in your life and for your life be the person uh, be the person who is the author of your life be the person who is writing what it is writing the script for your life be the person who commands your life be the person who settles issues and disputes that come up in your life stop being the person who is drinking poison and expecting others to die that ain't never going to work. So guys, um, I will actually put a link to the Forgiveness Project. And on that note, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. And let me just say this. Forgiveness isn't about validating what somebody's done to you. It's about letting go of the trauma that you feel based on what they've done. But that being said, guys, I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Until next time, guys, take care of you. And remember that life, your life, my life, our lives are built one choice at a time. May the universal creator known to me as God or whomever your chosen deity is shine the light upon your pathway so that you can, with an assurity of knowing, take the steps that you need to take you to the next level. Until next time, guys. I'm Dr. Wendy De- I'm I'm Dr. Wendy. I'm trying to get it out. I'm Dr. I'm Dr. Wendy Dearborn. Peace.